Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we are closer to the EVE window than the DUNA window, so we're probably going to go over to EVE and grab those tourists that we left behind and we haven't uh, fulfilled that contract yet. We've got to bring Mittop and Barbus back and we need to transfer any crew between vessels near EVE, that's another thing. Uh, and there's, well, that module's around Ike, so that's Duna stuff down there. But since we're going to do that, we might as well take a look at the contracts and see what else they have for us to do around EVE. Uh, we've got position satellite in equatorial orbit of Gilly. And so that's a new one. I guess so. Uh, sure, why not? Money's money. And uh, build, new, build new orbital station around EVE. This one requires room for 20 Kerbals, and it has to have three pilots on board. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, I, I don't... We haven't rescued enough Kerbals to make that happen, I don't think. Uh, I don't want to put all my pilots in one place kind of thing. That's dangerous. Hmm... Well, I mean, we're going to be sending one pilot over to bring the tourists back. Well, there might be one already there. Let me see. What, what do we have over there right now? We've assigned three. That looks like five to me. Oh, well, there's two tourists. And um, so we've got Chadman and uh, Murpont and Tedbury. And Murpont is over at Gilly. Chadman's over at Gilly. And Duna Mission 2 is over at Duna. Uh, Ted Bree is our permanent Duna resident. So those are the ones we have out. And as far as the ones we have available, we have three available. Oh, no, sorry, four. So we do have enough. We could potentially get uh, Chadman and Murpont into a station. But 20 Kerbals, geez. This is going to have to be a big rocket if we're going to do that. So, well... You know, a challenge a challenge. I don't think they're paying us enough, frankly, but... Alright, we'll see. Well, we've got a lot of science. Let's see what we can do about that. I mean, 20 Kerbals could uh, be fit most easily in... Well, I don't know if we're going to get to the shuttle parts that have that crew cabin. Where is that, anyway? Uh, here, the passenger module here carries 16. That's probably the most efficient way to uh, get that many Kerbals. Maybe a whole bunch of those Mark II bodies. The Mark II passenger cabin has some nice room. Um, we're gonna have to grab the module. Oh, it's here. So that's got four. So we'll need five of those in order to have enough space. So that's nine tons or so. And we would need for these passenger models, they're at the same tier. That's a little bit awkward. Uh, this is seven tons, but we would still need four more. So we'd need one more of these. So that ends up being nine tons as well. So about the same, but better than the hitchhiker storage containers, I think. We'd have to check that. Um, I think it might be time to do space plane stuff simply because we need to grab those modules. Um, well, we've got one contract like that. And we've got some more coming up. So we need a pretty big cargo bay for that deal. I mean, we could just stick it on the side and hope for the best on re-entry. And I've done that before, too. And I'll think about that. I've been wanting these little RCS tanks, though. And nuclear propulsion is helpful. Let me get the RCS tanks. We'll get supersonic flight. Then we probably need advanced aerodynamics for planes. And we'll need at least the medium landing gear, probably more than that. The big heat shield is nice too. Um, reaction wheel is sort of extra. We don't need that. Ladders could be good. We found a need for that on Duna. The Gigantor XL Solar Arrays would be nice for a station, though, especially one that carries 20 Kerbals. Oh, uh, now we want one of those, too. And Resource Scanner. 
<laughs> but we can't use it yet. We'd have to get the other technologies too. Okay, well, I've sold myself on the ladder and research lab bit. And if we're gonna have a big station, let's get these. And for the big station, let's just focus on that idea. This passenger model module is one thing. The crew cabin is another possibility. I think we'll go with the smaller one first. Uh, Mass-wise, it's going to end up the same, but we're going to need containment for four more Kerbals if we get this one anyway. And if we're going to make a shuttle, we'd probably want some of these parts no matter what. So we're not going to get this one and use it without getting this one as well. So I think I'm going to unlock this. Okay. Well, that's a pod. Well, that's certainly more stylish, but it's still a little bit too much Delta V. A docking port would save me from awkward questions about how the Kerbals, the tourists in particular, actually get into this, though. But nobody's going to ask that, right? <laughs> the tourists can't uh, go outside, so they'd have to go through the engine and the fuel tank. So, as far as hitchhiker storage containers are concerned, how heavy? Two tons. So that'd be ten tons altogether. If we just use the crew cabins, they're a little bit lighter. Not a huge amount. And we have to figure out a way to connect it all together. But they're more space friendly. I mean, physical space friendly. Of course, we're packing the Kerbals in like sardines, but... So that's two Kerbals, and then that's five Kerbals, so all we need is 14, and so four of the passenger cabins will do the trick. We don't need all the uh, ablator on here. Let's go with 320 there. Well, that looks too awkward. I mean, uh, we need something to blend it together with the rest of the body. Maybe just these adapters? Ah. To be honest, this is sort of suggesting 3.75 meter tanks here. You know, it's getting a little bit wide for the 2.5 meters. And we don't have 3.75 meter tanks. We need a viewing cupola too. I guess we should put that on top. I'll still have the docking port there even though it blocks the view. I'm gonna put a truss down the middle. Okay, so we have a central truss, and just for safety's sake, I'm going to strut them to that truss, these four outer segments. And that gives us 2,000 meters per second. Not a whole lot of thrust-to-weight ratio, mind you, but do we need a whole lot of thrust-to-weight ratio in space? No. Um, solar panel-wise, we're going to have them. I'll put them individually on two of the sides here. I wonder why this one alone is reversed. Hmm. Maybe we should have two of these since the thrust weight ratio is low. And we're going to have a docking port here for further expansions. Well, it's a thing. It is definitely a thing. Okay, and antennae. We don't really need anything too heavy. These commutrons have better bandwidth. And we're gonna be transmitting science with the science lab, hopefully. Or we'll, we'll just have one of these, maybe. I don't think we've deployed a magnetometer to Venus, uh, not Venus, Eve yet. Dome lights. Hmm, maybe two like this on the science lab. First use of lights on a station. That's really something. Okay. Eve Mega Station. <laughs> I mean, well, it's Mega for now. Alright, so what we have here is we've got the viewing cupola. Facilities support 20 Kerbals. It's got antennae. Docking port can generate power, and we will get the three Kerbals onto it, hopefully. 
we should be transferring crew. That will happen. There's a whole satellite in equatorial orbit of Gilly, which is completely separate, and we want to get the two Kerbals here. So now, this needs to be launched into orbit. Somehow. This is gonna be auto-strutted. The heaviest part does not seem like the best idea, though. Let's just disable that. You auto-strut to root part. That would be best. Okay, so we've got the jumbo fuel tank here. Let's create a nice big jumbo core. We probably don't have the main sail. Do we have the main sail? We do. Well, let's break it out. I don't know if I like the look of it, to be honest. Full, mid, and bare. Well, uh, I'll go with mid. It shows more of the engine, that's fine. Still has the fairing at the top, which in this case makes sense. Doesn't look superbly clusterable. If we had a heavy configuration, we'd probably want it like that, so we have the two boosters on this side. It's, uh, well, we don't have this enabled as for staging. So we will go with a heavy configuration and make it sort of a pseudo delta heavy. I don't suppose we can get the orange fuel tanks again? Okay, well, then that's good. It's not exactly a heavy configuration because I'm making the core taller than the sides so that we don't have to throw all down. I don't suppose we could get an orange nose. Oh, maybe we can. Uh, well, it even changes shape. I actually didn't want it to change shape, but okay. Um, actually, I don't want it to change shape. That wasn't what I was looking for. We'll just keep it white then. I would certainly like to auto strut um, to grandparent part for those. I'll even put actual struts. I hope that's enough Sepatron force for these big tanks. Been a while. Let's see, a thrust weight ratio in vacuum. It's pretty. Actually, we might have to make it shorter anyway. We barely get off the ground. It is pushing it a little bit. We might have to go with cross-feed with the fuel ducts from the outside to the inside. We're going to have to underfuel something. Okay, so we're doing that. I really don't want to top this off. I hope the launch clamps don't do that. I think they only do electric charge. You know, put some extra struts up here. I can't tell whether crossfeed is enabled or disabled on that port, really. Um, we'll need to keep an eye on it, making sure that the fuel from here doesn't feed down into the rocket. Anything else I've forgotten for this EVE mega station? I don't think so. Now, we need to build that satellite, and another thing I want is something that will allow us to ferry crew and tourists, potentially, from one location around EVE to another. So really, the satellite that we are planning to place around Gilly and the Kerbal Transfer Vehicle could be one and the same thing. I mean, there's no requirement on here that, you know, makes that impossible. So we're starting off with a Probodobodyne Hex, and we're going to put some batteries. Maybe a... I don't know, we, we could have a big docking port on one side and a little one on the other side. We're gonna have the engines on the bottom, so I think we're gonna go like that. And so that we have clearance for the engines, we'll put the small one on the tail. And that's just so that I get things organized in my head properly. Uh, we could just go for a Mark II crew cabin. Right? I mean, keep it simple kind of thing. We're planning on transferring three, though, really. I think is the plan. The two tourists and one pilot. 
Maybe we don't have to though. Maybe we can just transfer to tourists. But when it says transfer any crew between vessels near Eve, I guess that has to be as a spacewalk. So we do want to have room for an extra one here. Maybe we should get the Mark 1 cabin on. It's a little bit awkward looking. But it's not completely unpleasant. Okay, so vacuum delta V, 1200 meters per second. I mean, just going around Eve, I can see where that might not be enough. We haven't used the toroidal tanks yet, the donuts. My favorite pattern is to alternate the donuts with the Oscar bees. It's nice that the donuts have surface attachment enabled. I uh, sort of want to make sure we get everything even. That's a lot of Delta V. Now we've got 3,000 and we probably need those sparks. I don't know, that's interesting. That's interesting. It's not quite right. <laughs> There's something quite wrong about it. Um, hmm. Tell you what, maybe we should just leave out these. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It's got good delta V, it's got good thrust to weight ratio. And let's build a rocket for it. I mean, maybe we can launch this on our reusable one finally. We haven't used that in a while. It's probably asking for too much. We'll need some boosters on the Phoenix for that to happen. I'm just gonna put four thumpers. And technically we could probably extend the core a bit with the thrust weight ratio we're gonna get from the four thumpers. There we go. This might be a uh, formalized Phoenix 2. Not completely reusable, but at least a reusable core. I'm debating whether to put separatrons or not. I think it'll be alright. We'll see. We will see. Alright, so that's uh, Phoenix 2 with our payload and we'll launch this first and launch the station after. Throttle up and launch. Okay. This is a fierce looking booster. Probably have air brakes by now and possibly could have put those on. Extending the core also burdens the parachutes more. So we'll have to see how that shakes up. Okay, separation. Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. We're still going. Okay, fairing set. Okay, that's getting a little bit high on the orbit. Let's keep that there. Make sure our antenna is... I think it'll be safe right now. Ready to go. Okay, let's take a look at our communication situation. We've got a, uh, well that's debris. Um, well we've got a line to ComSat 4 right there, so that should be okay. Not very circular, but that'll do. Okay, well I've got communication definite. I'm gonna set the parachutes, let's say 0.25. I'm going to arm them. Okay, separation. So this is ready to go. But we'll hold off on actually doing the transfer. Let's bring the, the core stage back down. Hopefully. So we'll do the retro at Woomerang launch site.
or at that longitude. And 25.7 maybe? I don't know. Let's see. We were in a pretty lopsided sort of orbit, so put the gear down ahead of time. Okay, we have comms, we have parachute, but we should move the fuel down. Okay, we have heat effects. Everything looks stable. We'll see where it carries us. It looks pretty good. We might overshoot, maybe? Yeah, I'm still looking pretty good. I guess we'll undershoot, actually. Maybe physical time warp had a part in that. Uh, I don't know. Not bad, though. Could be worse. Almost still in view of the KSC there. 8.4 meters per second, though. Yeah, adding that extra tank really... Um, well, this is going to be a hard touchdown. And it's slopey, even though it looked flat from higher up. Oop. Okay, can it hold? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! But the parachutes are doing their job. Gosh, they really made the parachutes nice. I remember when they, they definitely did not do that. So, they saved us. Recover vessel, and on with the mission. Well, there's an even counter. And it does. It looks like we're flying by the moon, but it's not going to be bad. We could probably do some sort of mid-course adjustment to make that better. But for now, that's fine. Once again, make sure that the moon pass is not a problem. It isn't. It'd be fancy if the terrier ended up smashing into the moon. It's not going to do our entire burn. But I don't think that's going to happen, and I'm not going to try and make it happen or anything. Okay, and go. Okay, we will have good comms through staging, it looks like, thanks to Comsat 5. Okay, stage and ignition. Stage and ignition. Okay, let's see, where did that uh, end up? Yeah, yeah, nowhere near the moon. So it's not gonna crash into the moon, but it will be on escape. So at least it's not gonna be hanging around Kerbin. So I ultimately want to send this to Gilly. That's a 42 degree inclination difference, but what we want is to do an off-plane transfer to Gilly so we don't have to correct that at all. Uh, that's actually probably a good deal. Let's see. So... We want to hit Gilly at that ascending node is the idea. Instead of bothering with the inclination. Okay, we'll plot that and so we won't do a mid-course adjustment with this. We will Pay attention to it as it passes by the moon. Okay, moon encounter. And moon escape. Alright, how's our EVE situation right now? Uh, seems more or less the same. Okay, so this is on its way. And we'll pay attention to it when it gets there. Next up, the big one. The big station. Well, it occurs to me that they want three pilots on the station, and if we send Val, as we intended to, then the transfer pod can only carry one pilot and the two tourists. We need to bring the two tourists to the return vessel here. And so we'll be short one pilot like that unless we send two initially. Unless we like bring the ghillie station over to this and dock it to it. 
that's a whole other business or dock this to that so maybe we'll send two we'll have valentina and ornard i guess not that we really i wish they asked for maybe a pilot engineer and scientist or something we need scientists here for the mobile processing lab but they didn't ask for that and i'm not gonna send them until and we only have one scientist bob for that matter i guess we should send bob maybe <laughs> i mean uh well this is gonna be interesting all right why not it's not like they need food water and oxygen anywhere anyway we've got val ornard and bob whole mission okay well this better work okay so a little bit of a wiggle throttle up sas is on first firing of mainsails and we've got a whole heavy configuration with them let's see launch i'm sure this is not risky at all look at that pitch wiggle though Gosh, I'm gonna... It's its going more and more erratic. Um, I'm gonna auto-strut more things. Auto-strut, thankfully, is a thing. Uh, this feels awful to handle uh. at least we're not releasing the boosters during high dynamic pressure oh, oh, oh we're going off to one side no 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 I didn't ask for that I didn't ask for that I didn't ask for that nobody asked for that oh shoot It's, it's persistently going off to one side for some reason, and I don't understand why. Ah, uh, well, this isn't very efficient, is it? Okay, well, we're thin enough up here that I can gain control over it, but... Whole thing's gone suboptimal now. Okay, separation. Well, at least separation worked. Oh, this has a lot more Delta V than it was telling me. Wait, is it sucking fuel? No? Apparently not. Well, once again, the whole enable staging on the docking port completely lies about the Delta V situation. We got way more than this needed. I should have just checked it by calculating myself, to be honest. Oh, we need to go up more. Well, it's a good thing we have more than we needed, because we're going to need it soon. <laughs> uh, this has all gone awry. I thought surely... To ma they haven't like reduced the gimbling on the mainsail or anything, have they? But surely the mainsails will be able to handle this. Considering how awesome they are. Well, on the bright side, since this is a non-reusable stage, we can just go ahead and use it for the transfer as well. Alright, we've got a 100 kilometer apoapsis. We'll wait until apoapsis to circularize. This thing is going all over the place. Hmm. Let's take a look at where we're at. Can we just go ahead and do the transfer burn? I think so. Yeah, I mean, even right now, I think would be a good time. Oh, no, it's using that fuel. It's using that fuel. Gosh darn it. It was just lower priority. Uh, 
I was fooled. Oh, that's not good at all. It's even used that fuel, I bet. Oh no, there's nothing here even. Oh dear. I should be able to switch something to something that's not controllable, darn it. Anyway, um... Well, we've got a little bit left in here, but that's not good enough. Well, at least this stuff is still here, but... Yeah, we're in a bit of a pickle. We should be able to capture around Eve. But let me replot this now. I should have known. It was too good to be true, that huge Delta V number. We're sort of off. And the moon is not helping with this. Okay, well, I've got a maneuver in four days that will get us there. We, I rushed a little bit as far as making the transfer burn, and it turns out that we probably should have waited in orbit for, for a bit before doing that, and we are off by quite a lot. But if we have, let's say, 700 meters per second, we should be able to handle this, uh, of course, in this stage right now, we don't. So we need to transfer all the fuel from the return craft into the station, and then we'll see if we've got enough. It's still reading delta V up there, which it shouldn't be. Let's see. Okay, now I guess that's right. 777. So we have enough, but it's tight. And we need to launch some some other refueler module to this. I guess we'll dock it on the tail there. We'll have a big refueling thing, I suppose. But I'll have to launch that next time. For now, we have this situation, and we're going to have to do something about it. So, we will check out what happens with these missions in the next video. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.